Okay, this is um, continuing to try to find the basic derivatives or basic rules of derivatives. This time, taking the derivative of a trigonometric function. Uh, the first thing is we had those note cards, so hopefully you have it all written down, and we're memorizing these things because if we have them memorized, I think it's much more, it's much easier to try to do the work. So here we go. Uh, I think one thing is when we look at trigonometric functions to consider the, the parentheses really carefully and, and ask ourselves what does it really mean so in the first case right here the first case right here uh, y equals cosine of 3x well that is what it means that is it means exactly what it, you think it means so we start doing that remember that we memorized that we did we memorized that cos that the first derivative of cosine of f of x is equal to the opposite of sine of f of x times f prime in x. That is to say that we're going to take the derivative of the outside and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And we know that the first derivative of cosine is opposite sine, but remember we're not going to put an x in, we're going to put f of x back in. And then second, we're going to take the derivative of the inside, and the inside was the 3x squared. So the first derivative of 3x squared is 6x. And then we're just going to simplify a little bit and say that the first derivative is equal to the opposite of 6x sine of 3x squared. So that's this one. This one is a little bit different. It was really confusing when I first looked at it, I admit. Our function is y equals cosine of 3 times x squared. And if you realize this, that here's the unit circle, and here's pi, and here's 0, and pi is, I hate to say it, but pi is equal to about 3.14, and half of 3.14 is about 1.57, yeah, 1.57. So cosine of 3 is some value on the unit circle, on the unit circle, let's pretend it's a circle here, about here. That is to say, it has a numeric value. We, we can find the value. So this is just a constant multiplier here, right? So you could look at this as if this was just 3x squared, in which case you would take the derivative here, 2 times this, and 2 times this is this, and we'd decrement the exponent by 1, and we'd have this constant multiplier times the derivative. So this is a derivative. I, for me, it was a little bit confusing. Hopefully, it was okay for you. If not, please ask me in class, and we can go through other examples like that. What I'm trying to show you is that it's just a numeric value there. Here's another one um, that just actually needs to be simplified a little bit. So we receive on our quiz or our test that y equals the cosine of the quantity 3x squared. And all I'm saying to you is remember that exponents are distributable over multiplication. So 3 squared is 9. And of course, x squared is, well, x squared. And then we take that rule that we know that the first derivative of cosine of f of x is equal to the opposite sine of f of x, which is something we memorized times the derivative of the inside. So here's the opposite of sine of f of x, because f of x is that part here, times the derivative of the inside. Remember, the derivative the inside is here, 9x squared. And what's the derivative of 9x squared? Hello? Sure. 18x. Yeah, good. And then here, finally, just simplified, 18x times negative sine is this value here. If you need to, please stop the video along the way to catch up a little bit. I'm going to try to move through this pretty quickly. So stop on the things you don't know and move through the things that you do. <clears throat> Here's another thing that's really confusing to people. So we read this, and when we're in trigonometry, we recognize this and, w and what this actually signifies. But it's really hard to figure out what this really means. So we see y equals cosine squared x. And we have to realize that what that really means is that y equals cosine of x squared. And if we can get our rewrite to this point right here, I think we can easily use the chain rule, I think. But from here, I can see how a person would not be sure what to do. I also want to remember, uh, remind you that if this is true about cosine, it's true about tangent, it's true about sine, it's true about cotan, cosecant, and secant. So I'm using cosine as the, as the example right now, but this would be true here also. So if we had sine squared x, it would be the same as sine x squared, etc. Okay? All right. Then this is just straight to the chain rule. Here's the outside function I put in white, and 2 times 1 is this 2. I'm going to decrease the exponential value by 1. That makes this to the first power here. I'm going to leave f of x in there, which was cosine x. 
and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And remember that the deriv first derivative of cosine of x is opposite sine x, isn't it? So when we broke that out, we have up here the derivative of the outside, f prime at g of x, times the derivative of the inside, opposite sine of x. And then we're just going to simplify a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to show you that this negative sign right here came from here. This 2 here came from here. This cosine here came from here. Sign here. If you're wondering where the negative sign is, Dylan, remember it's there. Biocondi. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, back to this. So in the next example, we have y equals the square root of cosine of x. Again, we, as we talk about differentiation, I say to you over and over that the most important thing is that you rewrite it in a way that you can apply a rule to it. So in this way, it's really hard to kind of see the chain rule happening here. But if you rewrite it here, right, the square root is the same as the quantity to the one-half power. If you, hopefully you remember this little rule from algebra that the square root of n is equivalent to n to the one-half power. So I just rewrote this function. Then I'm going to start taking its derivative. Um, I'm going to take one-half times one is this one-half right here. I'm going to decrease the one-half by one. So minus two over two is negative one-half. And that's, again, the derivative of the outside. Now I have to take, go back and take the derivative of the inside. I'm applying the chain rule here. And what is the first derivative of cosine of x? Well, it's the opposite of sine of x. So that's what we have right there. Uh, when we're done, we have to simplify this a little bit. Remember, we have a negative exponent here. That means it has to go back under the denominator. I trade in the one-half power here. I trade in this one-half power here, right here, for this right here. So these, this is where this comes from, and we have it. So I hope this is really helpful. I think it will be really, really helpful if you kind of look over this video and ask yourself, what are the things that confuse you? I think one of the things that we talked about a little bit in class today was this. And we had some problem that was like cotan squared x. And say, okay, well, what's that derivative? And say, okay, well, what can we assume about this? And what we can assume about that is this. And I think it will be really, really helpful. If you have questions, please write them in the comments or we'll talk about them in class. Please study. Make sure you have all of these things memorized. Please, please, please. Okay, you guys, have a great weekend.